<clears throat> Today's saint, Saint Praxitus, is uh, uh, one of the early church saints that comes to us. And she is an interesting saint, oftentimes depicted as a holding a, uh, a dish and with a, with a sponge, as well as in her other hand, a whole bunch of palms in her hand. The symbol of this is due to what exactly she did in her life. She was never a martyr herself, but she shared in the martyrdom of so many. She aided so many that were persecuted by the church. Her father was a Roman citizen and, and a senator. Uh, his name was Putens, and he and all of her siblings and her mother, all of them uh, became saints in the church. They were converted originally by St. Peter, and it's said that he had set up in their home one of his chapels. Those of you who have been in missions and had house masses can relate to the fact that uh, at times when, the church, when ma there's only small groups of people having mass, your house is used as a chapel to be set up to have the mass said in it. Well, it's amazing to think about it, but Rome at that point in time, when the apostles first got started, was just that, a small little mission place for them to work on souls, to gain, to grow. And so it was at the her at uh, her house that uh, mass was said while she was a little girl her whole family being converted being part of the senate and being part of the nobility and a citizen it afforded them some aspect of of uh, safety a little bit that's not to say that uh, they were safe from the pagans but being part of the noble class and things they were afforded certain amounts that weren't unnecessarily allowed it to the other christians at the time and so when the persecution rose up here is where praxitus and her whole family found themselves having to aid so many christians at times people would have to be hidden out in their own in her own home that she would take them in off from the streets because they didn't have anywhere to go or other times they were left completely destitute and would need money so for food and for clothing and whatever it may be that to be able to sustain basic survival, to find other Christians to be able to, f to pray with and to find confidence in. These things were important too for Praxitus that, that she would, would, would find these persecuted Christians in the city and she would oftentimes just spend time with them, talk with them, encourage them, pray with them. These things did great to be able to strengthen their spirits in those times of persecution. At times when people would be find themselves in uh, incarcerated in prison, she would find a way to sneak in and to be able to visit and encourage the prisoners there. These are all the parts that we sort of forget about persecution when we read about the persecution of the early martyrs. We think of them almost as sort of superhuman people, that they just had such strong faith and then the bad guys came and then they told them that either you give up your faith or we chop off your head or we torture you in these various ways. And then God assisted them with such amount of strength that they never even wavered or questioned at all. But that's not the truth. They were, they were irregular human beings, just like you and me. They had to suffer greatly even outside of the times when they were actually being put to death because in that they found themselves really having to stay strong when so much of society was against them and that they stood up to potentially have complete financial ruin and complete loss of their homes and complete loss of everything that they possessed in their lives while not having to die and still survive in those ways, to lose their freedom and be incarcerated and enslaved. These types of things happen to these Christians, not just having them fed to wild beasts in the amphitheater. And so Praxitus was there all along the way to support and encourage them through so much difficulty and so much trial. And when it was time for Christians to die, she would encourage them to the very end. And then at the risk of her own life, she would oftentimes help in the giving proper burials to the Christians who had been martyred, finding herself on her ends and knees, soaking up the blood that they had spilled 
and saving these in these rags that precious relic of the blood of the martyrs taking their their mortal remains and sneaking off under the cover of darkness to find their way below ground into the catacombs to secretly give them a proper burial it is the very very beginning of the church the apostolic times but even there we see the precious safeguarding of relics and the proper respect and honor due to a Catholic body that has died to be buried in a proper way and to be have been laid to rest and uh, in expectation of the rising from the dead on the final day of judgment. In the end, Praxitis, this was her life work to ensure these ends for these good, strong Christians. And it took a lot of faith and courage on her part and many risks to her own life. Finally, in the end, she saw herself not being rounded up in the persecution still, but nevertheless just completely uh, worn out by her efforts, the emotional toll that it took on her. And so she finally prayed to Almighty God that if it wasn't His will that she should give her life for Him, that perhaps maybe he could take her life to spare her from the heartbreak of watching more Christians continue to suffer at the hands of the pagans. And with that prayer, she passed away and entered into paradise, a great saint for the, for the protection of relics and the, and the safekeeping of uh, Christian bodies in persecution and also for charity. For us, it's also a good reminder outside of what we do with the dead as to what we know at times we will face, as we have seen in the not too recent past, of course, that it is entirely possible that, w that if persecution comes, it's not necessarily going to mean our heads on a pike. In a way, sometimes that's a bit easier, but it might come at risking our own safe safety and our own comfortable existence in order to maintain the faith. And in that, we continue to pray for that strength from heaven, as those early Christians did too. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.